Hi, welcome to my video on an example of an options hedge. Now there's an introduction video that you may want to make sure that you've watched first, but in this example, we're going to take a look at a buyer of corn and how they might hedge. But in this time, in this case, we're going to look at it from an options hedge perspective. Now, be an active learner, make sure that you take notes along the way. I'm going to review the information I have, but you need to write it down so that you can see how we obtain the information or what's important. All right, let's take a look. All right, again, we are a buyer of corn. And in my example, again, write this down. Today is April and we have risk all the way to August. So April, May, June, July, and then in August, about five months away, we will actually need to go ahead and purchase corn for, let's just say our feed mill operation. But right now our feed mill bins are full. We don't have the capacity. So we are sitting out there in the cash price looking to see what it might cost us in August to get this grain. Now we are selling feed to our customers. So if prices were to spike on us, in other words, if corn was to get really expensive, then we would have to turn around and change the cost of our feed to try to maintain some level of profit. And that might be a problem if our competitors did a better job of managing price risk. So options hedging or contract hedging are important tools. All right, so that's what we are. We are a buyer of corn, have a feed mill. Today's April, and we've got risk all the way to August. And you might write down, August is when we actually will buy. And so that's kind of our window of time here. So what is our risk? The risk is prices going up. All right, I've got a little more about today. So today I've broken into two pieces of information you'll need to know. You always need to know what your beginning cash price is. So I'm going to say right now we go to Amarillo in a local grain elevator that we buy the corn from to put in our bins to get ready to make feed. And that price right now is $2.70 in April. Now also we look at the futures market and we decide that a September contract will work. That September contract will be due after our need to actually buy it. So that's a good contract to trade. That September contract's trading for $2.80. But we also have a futures options contract. So it's kind of like looking at the futures market and saying, well, that's what the contract's trading for. But a September, and I need to write that down here, September options, so write that down, September options are going to be broken up by strike prices and we are looking at a call option and that's because we are a buyer. So if we were to do a futures contract hedge, we would take a buy. That means we're looking at a call option and that call option has some choices. We could get a call option that gives us the right to buy at 270, so that is a strike price. 270, that would cost you 20 cents a bushel to get that done. To keep this in simple terms, I'm gonna look at everything in bushels. 280 is the next strike price, and that would cost you 10 cents to buy. And then 290 is a strike price that would cost you 5 cents to buy. Now, this is the information you'll need to always be looking for in your problems. And on options, again, as my introductory video said, it's a little more complicated. You have to choose which strike price you would want. And I gave you three right here. Now, this September contract is at 280 in April. Now, we're all talking about April right now. So in April, you could buy a futures contract for 280 or you could buy the options. Now, these options are broken up by strike price, but I have some new terms for you. First of all, let's start out at 280. 280 is called at the money. Why is 280 at the money? Because that's where the market is right now. Is it 280? So this strike price is called at the money. Now, let's look at the other strike prices. There's a strike price at 270. Remember, a call option gives you the right to buy. So you could buy this for 270 right now. You have the option to buy it for 270. What could you sell it for immediately? You could sell it for 280. That automatically would make you how much money? 270 minus 280. It'd make you 10 cents. So that is called in the money. Now this term in the money means we're making money right away. So at the money is the current market. So let me write that. It's the current market price. 
in the money means that we are making money immediately. That's because we could, again, buy it for 270. That's the right of a call, to buy it at 270. But you're going to have to turn around and sell it for 280 and make 10 cents right away. So that's great. However, the premium costs you way more than that. So the premium for in the money is I'm also going to write on the other side. It is expensive. Now, the thing about these options are they change in prices. The futures market right now is at 280. So the market's moving all the time. That means these strike prices become at the money and then they become in the money or they move. So these aren't always going to be the same. But right now today, this is my snapshot. These are what I have. That makes this 270 in the money and it's expensive. All right, let's keep going. What's the last one? The last one's $2.90. Remember, it's the right to buy at 290. What could you immediately sell it for? 280. That loses you money. No one would do that. You buy this at 290 and that is called out of the money. Let's see. That is, let me maybe try to erase that to help out a little bit here in my notes for you here. That is called out of the money. And that is going to be out of the market meaning it is not right there in the market, it's out of the market. And in fact, this is the one that is the, let's just put the cheapest, strike price premium. And in fact, I'll tell you that the out of the money options, let me put a little box around it, you do the same. An out of the money option is the one that you're typically going to want in the problem. So when you take on an options hedge, you have to kind of figure out what's at the money and then where is out of the money. And that's probably the premium I'm going to be picking if I were to choose an options hedge. All right, so this is the information that you need to always be given. The cash price, the futures contract that you're looking at and what it's worth, and then you need to have the options and then you'll be able to have different strike prices. You're looking for the one that's out of the money, the cheapest premium. And that's the one you're probably going to be using. Okay, so here is our situation. How do you set up the normal table for the hedge? Well, let's go ahead and set that up. You're always going to be involved in two markets. That's the cash and the futures. So nothing's different there. You always have a date like today is April. And we are looking at the risk all the way to August. And you need to know that you are a buyer in this example. And we're a buyer of corn is what we need to know. And then this is going to be your table to set up the hedge, just like normal. Cash price when we first start is $2.70. And the futures price is going to be a September contract at $2.80 that we're looking at right now on the September contract. All right, this is the setup of the hedge, but remember the beginning cash price is your lock-in. In your scenario here, it needs to explain to us what do we think about this. And so I didn't really tell you that. This is just the cash and the futures, but let's go ahead and add more information to our problem. And so if you're taking notes, uh, put this futures market hedge kind of out of the way, and this is your beginning information, and then we're going to have the ending information. But here's something very important. On the beginning information, we do not like the current cash price. We do not like the current cash price. Probably other things in here you might have are going to be things like uh, that it looks like there's a lot of oversupply in the market. It looks like prices are going to continue to fall. So we're looking at a 270 price and that's a price to us that we see. But when we have news like looks like the current prices are going to continue to fall, you look at this and say in our position we do not like the lock-in. Now, if you do not like the lock-in, as soon as you take a position on this market, you lock that in. That's what our contract hedges were all about. This particular case, I do not like the lock-in. I do not want to lock this in. So I can't 
take a position here. Now, normally I would put a buy position in this box. So instead, I'm going to use an options hedge. So write that down in your problem over here. We're going to go with an options hedge. And in fact, we've got the information to put it in. So let's put it in here while we have it. The options hedge is going to be a strike price of $2.90 because that's the one that was out of the money. The premium is going to cost me five cents. I put a little negative in front of that. That's what it'll cost me to do this. So my strike price is $2.90. So I have the right to buy at $2.90. And let's go ahead and put in that we're talking about a call option. So I'm looking at a call option, the strike price of $2.90, and I need a premium. And that's the information I need in the futures market if I'm going to do an options hedge. And I'm going to leave this blank in here because we did not take a position. We can if we want, but we want to see what happens in August. All right, let's move through. And this is, you're always going to have a beginning situation, which is what this is. And then you're always looking for the ending situation. So here's what happened in August. So in August, the cash price became $2.60 a bushel in Amarillo. So as a buyer, we're happy about that. The price fell. In August, the September contract that we looked at move to a price of 265 on that September contract. So that's the information we need to fill out our table. So let's go back here in the cash price, it dropped down to 260. So it got cheaper. So for us as a buyer, we just improved ourselves by 10 cents. Now remember, we did not lock that 270 in because I thought it might get better, and it did. So there's the 260. The futures contract, we were looking at a September contract. And that September contract is now trading for 265. So when we come and take a look at this, do you want a position on that contract? Well, if you would have taken a position up here, it would have been buy 270 or buy 280 sell 265, you would have lost 15 cents on that. So we didn't have to do that. We actually had an options hedge. Gives you the right, if you want, to buy for, because it's a call, to buy for 290. If you did that, you would have to sell for 265. You would lose even more money. So the answer is that we would not want to exercise our option. So we don't want to exercise it. We don't want to take the position. However, it did cost us that premium. I'm going to put a box around that. So I am going to put a negative over here, but that negative is not from the market. That is from the premium that we had to pay. So a options hedge is very similar to a futures hedge. There's still a seesaw effect. However, with the seesaw effect that allows you to gain in the cash, which is what you're hoping might happen. And you are still going to lose in the futures, but all you're going to lose is the premium. That's why we choose the cheapest out of the money premium that we can pick. And so that's what we have here. Uh, basis is still a term that we've also used before and basis still is there. In fact, you have a, a 10 cent basis here. And then as you come down here, you've got a five cent basis here. And so the basis changes, but it really is not, doesn't play as much of a role because we're not locking this in. We're actually just trying to give ourselves a backup plan, which is the option. All right. So overall, what's the net price that we paid for our corn that we were trying to protect? Well, one is we paid $2.60 uh, in the cash market, which is great. We still have the futures market. It lost us I'm going to put a loss here of a premium of five cents. So actually, when it comes down to what we had to pay, this insurance, you may think of an options hedge is much like insurance. In fact, all hedges are insurance. But an options hedge is very much like it. We paid a premium in case we needed it. Turned out we didn't need it. So actually, what would you end up paying for your corn? 
you ended up paying $2.65. Now that's a whole lot better than our lock-in because if we would have locked that in, we would have been 270 or maybe even higher. And in fact, in this case, we would have actually lost 15 cents. We really would have paid more like the 275. And so instead, we actually only paid 265. It's a lot better deal. So what is an options hedge? An options hedge gives you the right, like a backup plan, because you don't like the lock-in. If you like the lock-in, you would do a contract hedge. So if you don't like the lock-in, in other words, something tells us we don't like where the market currently is, then if you go out into the future, it could get even worse for you if you used a futures contract hedge. But you can't stay wide open to risk. So what's the backup plan? It's called an options hedge. You have to pick a strike price. You've got to pay a premium. But if you pick the right strike price and premium, that premium is relatively cheap. It gives you some insurance in case the market hurts you. In this case, it didn't hurt me. It helped me. So the only loss I had to pay was the premium. I factored that in for my net price. And that is how you work what's called an options hedge. Thanks.